The easiest way to access data in an Analysis Services Cube is to use Excel. In fact, browsing Analysis Services Cubes in Excel is completely out of the box. There's no additional software required. So to do that, I'll just launch Excel as I normally would. I, there are no add-ins that I've installed in order to browse cubes. And I can browse um, any kind of Analysis Services Cube. So that can be a multi-dimensional cube from um, any version of, of uh, Analysis Services 2000, 2005, 8, 8 or 2, 2008 or 2, or uh, 2012 are, are typically the versions that you'll uh, be using. Uh, or I can also use the same exact method to browse a tabular cube in uh, Analysis Services. The process is exactly the same. So let's take a look at how to do that. Um, the first thing we'll do is tell Excel that we want to get data from some other source. And the second option is Analysis Services, so I'll click on that. It's going to ask me for the server name. In my case, uh, the, the server I'm going to get this cube from is called LabSQL1 and has an instance name MD, so I have to put this in uh, LabSQL and backslash MD. Um, your cube will vary, you know, so the server will be different for, for your environment. I can either log in with a username and password or Windows Authentication. I'll use Windows Authentication, it's the most common case, I think. And then I have to select which database that I want, and there's a database on the server called Contoso AS, which is a Microsoft sample data. And then I choose which cube or perspective. A perspective is, think of like a subset of a cube. It's something that's it's been filtered for my convenience so that I don't have to look at quite so much in my pivot table. Um, and, and usually a perspective will be along some kind of subject area, like in this case, sales inventory, uh, machines, and, um, and there are all of these three perspectives are actually built on top of one operations cube. I'll, I'll choose this perspective. It'll give me a little bit less to wade through to get the data I want. And then I'm asked to give a friendly name here. Um, I'm just going to call this contoso.odc. Um, we'll come back to this ODC in later lessons. So this is a file that, that we'll use in other ways with uh, SharePoint when we're publishing um, Excel services books. And then I'm going to give it the same friendly name. And I will just click Finish. Yeah, OK, it'll ask me, where do I want to start my pivot table output? And A1 is fine. So you notice what happens is I get this pivot table and a pivot table viewer. This almost looks exactly like if you were using a regular pivot table in Excel. And the uh, the, the biggest difference is I don't, I don't have to go and create this. I don't have to import data and so on. So every time I access this data, this, this information is not being, all of it isn't being pulled down into Excel and then sorted out. Uh, Excel will actually take what I say I want and then send a make a query, send it to the server, and the results come back. So you'll find that the, uh, a workbook with an analysis services cube will still be very small. All the data isn't inside the workbook. Um, at any given time, only the information that's part of the current query is there. And I'm just going to set up a, a really quick uh, query just to give you an idea of how this works. I'll put the geography on uh, rows. And notice I'm choosing hierarchies here. And I'm find my date hierarchy is around here somewhere. And let me find, I think, well, it doesn't matter which one. I'll just choose one of these hierarchies and put on the labels. Okay, so now I have a nice little um, total. And, and the data that's behind this is there's quite a lot of it, but you notice the performance is really good because uh, really the, the server is doing most of the work and the server has a lot more power than my, my desktop uh, does here. Uh, from there, I can do some different and interesting things. Um, I'm just going to close that field list. If I want to get the field list back, there's this little show field list button up here. But I can drill down within these hierarchies that have already been established. So if I want to look into Spain and you know go down to the city level, I can do that. I can also do some interesting things that, um, that we have with Excel. We can um, extend the data and, and make it look more interesting. Maybe some conditional formatting with, with data bars to show the relative um, shape of the data and maybe I just want to take my countries here and format those with color scales to show which has which which countries have the most amount of sales and, and the least so I'll give it a little bit more more color to it. Um, the other thing which the Excel 2010 adds is this concept of a slicer so a slicer is kind of like a filter but is a lot more fun and, and easy to interact with so I'll just put in 
um, a couple slicers if I go down and find my product and yeah, products category I'll put a slicer in for that and I think I'll and then I'll add one more slicer for my promotions so I'm just gonna promotion type so I'm not going to I could make these customized and really pretty but I'll just to give you a, a as a first lesson basic idea of how these slicers work so I've, I've put the slicers in um, if you notice the, pip, the the slicers have to be attached to a pivot table these are automatically because I um, created the slicer while my cursor was inside the pivot table if you create a slicer when your cursor is out here then you'll have to draw those connections yourself but um, if you notice when I click different slices I can see the data is automatically changing so this gives a really interesting way to slice and dice data with very little effort. You see this, this took me almost no time to do. And then a final note about um, using workbooks is, is you can you can save this worksheet and uh, if I wanted to save that in my documents and just call this Contoso data, I can do that and as I said the, you're not downloading all this information you're actually um, just pulling down and this is 31 kilobytes because all that information that makes up these large numbers are still in the database so as we're querying the database um, we're just pulling back the results we want we don't have to download all the information so that's a basic introduction to querying data using Excel uh, again all you have to do is um, use the data data ribbon to get data from other sources and insert from analysis services server name database insert and slice away